Update 1.14.3 brings forth season two in Last Day on Earth. This includes a whole new set of tasks and a great storyline, coupled with incredible rewards for those who buy the premium version. However, some of the rewards and hidden changes of this update have implications that will eventually break the game. The first and most obvious change is the new storyline and tasks that make up Season 2. This storyline begins with Barker's Camp, where you will meet the camp's leader, Samuel Eli Barker. He will then send you on tons of quests all over the Last Day on Earth world. It's a pretty good storyline, so I will try my best not to spoil anything for you guys while also going through the things that you most need to know. The first quest Barker sends you on takes you to the Survivor's Camp, which is a pretty easy task considering that you don't have to keep the survivors alive to succeed. You can also use the spike defenses to kill everything if you are trying to save weapons. But if you want to speed up the process, I recommend bringing a weapon that does AoE damage. After killing all of the zombies, make sure to pick up all the eyeballs because you will need them for Barker's next task, which is to fix his laboratory bench. This shouldn't be too hard to do for an advanced player. If you're having trouble getting any of these items, make sure to check out my playlist on the most efficient way to get resources. After finishing the laboratory, it will allow you to use additional eyeballs to infect your weapons. This upgrade is purely aesthetic and does not seem to give any benefits to the weapon. But then again, I didn't have the time to try it on all the different types of enemies. Barker will then send you to clear out the first infected lab. Make sure to bring a bandage to heal this soldier. When you go into this basement, you will either want to bring extra food or some kind of ranged weapon to kill these cocoons. When you get to the end of the basement, you will encounter your first boss called the Specimen Screen. Don't bother sneaking up on the Screamer because he will just immediately heal whatever damage you do initially. After every 10 seconds of fighting the Screamer, he will use a very large range skill that stuns you if you get hit by it. Also, the Screamer's basic attack does 120 damage, so even if you're wearing good armor, you don't want to get hit by him. When his health gets below 800, two riot zombies will come through the first door. These zombies are not too bad, but they can be hard to kill, which is incredibly annoying since you are also trying to dodge the Screamer. Screamer's long range skill. When his health gets below 600, a fitted corpse will come out the second door. Since it doesn't really make sense to bring a gas mask for this one enemy, I recommend just using a long range weapon to take him out. In fact, as a general rule of thumb, it is best to take out the smaller enemies before continuing to damage the boss. When the Screamer's health gets below 400, a toxic spitter will appear, which isn't that hard to take out because he runs really fast so it's easy to separate him from the others, but he does have 500 health and heals occasionally. So you you do want to take the spear out quickly. When the Screamer gets below 200 health, an Exploder will appear. I've already explained how to take out Exploders and their accompanying parasites in my video on how to do hard mode. If for any reason you die while taking out this boss, Kafir made it to where your body appears at the beginning of the basement so that you can gather your stuff in safety and try again. After you return to Barker, he will inform you that four scouts are on their way to kill everyone at the camp. And for some reason, he thinks it would be better for you to go alone alone into the forest to handle it by yourself, instead of waiting for them at the camp where you have other soldiers with you. But he turns out to be right because they approach you one at a time. The fastest way to kill these four scouts is to go back and forth between the yellow and red forest zones. After being in one of those zones for about 30 seconds, a scout will appear. Once the four are dead, return to Barker's camp and he will send you to the second lab, which is located in a military base of sorts. This base is pretty easy because all of the soldiers are are deaf and cannot hear you fighting their fellow soldiers, but to complete this objective you will need two strong hatchets to break these two doors. You do not need to break into these other two rooms because the main reason for entering this house is to search this bookshelf so that you can get the C4, which will then allow you to get into the second lab. After you go into the second lab and destroy this cocoon, you will see a door. Once you enter, the door will shut behind you and the second boss, called the Specimen Giant, will appear. The Specimen Giant is a lot like the blind one in that after he attacks you five times, he will use a charge skill to run into the wall. However, instead of damaging when he hits the wall, your objective is to make sure he charges into one of the exploding barrels, which will do 400 damage to him. After the barrel explodes, the giant will retreat to begin healing while four parasites attack you. Furthermore, about 24 crawlers will come to start destroying this gas tank. Killing these crawlers is important not only to get the giant to stop healing, but because if they destroy the gas tank, it will explode 
killing you, but not killing the giant. Luckily, if you die, your body will again spawn in the first room of the lab, just like the first one. But obviously that resets the challenge, so you don't want to do that. I strongly recommend bringing a weapon with AoE damage, like a grenade launcher or an AK-47 with a grenade attachment, because the faster you kill all the crawlers, the easier it will be to kill the giant in time. When you return to Barker's camp, it will get invaded by zombies. This is not hard to fend off, and afterwards, Barker will send you to a house called the Core of the Infection, where you will fight the third boss called Specimen Alpha, which is the hardest boss in the game. You do not want to go cheap when fighting this boss because you will lose and then have to do it over again. The trick to beating this boss is to do damage as fast as possible. Bringing your best weapons will actually save you weapons because the longer you take to complete this objective, the more damage you will have to do. After just a few seconds of fighting, the Alpha will go into the house and two or three Specimen Betas will appear. These Betas will try to cover as much of the map as they can with toxic spit, which is another reason that you want to go as quickly as possible. After losing a few times, I finally broke down and used my fully modified scars. By doing this, I was able to kill the alpha in just a little over two rounds, which made it a lot cheaper than the times that I was using shotguns and AK-47s. After you kill the alpha, you will need one wire, three bolts, and five scrap metal to fix the device and enter the lab. To avoid spoiling the story for you guys, I won't tell you what's down there, but it is not a difficult battle. Just bring a weapon that's at least as good as a Glock, some healing, and you won't have any problem with the last fight. So this concludes the storyline, but there are still dozens and dozens of tasks for you to complete, which unlocks higher levels of rewards. In my opinion, the rewards aren't that great for free to play players, but I may just feel that way because the rewards are really amazing for people who buy the premium package. As you look through these rewards, you will start to notice several of the hidden changes of this update. They made it to where advancing in season levels requires 20 points instead of the 10 it required in season one, but they also changed it to where tasks are much easier to complete. They also added more levels with better loot compared to season one, but again, most of those are just for premium members. They added the virus chopper pattern. They added the harpoon gun, which is a high damage weapon with a low rate of fire. They added an item called the infected specimen, which doesn't seem to have a purpose yet. They added Kevlar armor, which you can get a full set at level 40 if you buy the premium version. You can also get a set of Kevlar armor by doing the season saving pack. But as you can see by the fact that I only have 85 points and I've already completed the storyline, it requires a ton of tasks and spending $5 to get that set. Obviously both of those ways cost money, so the only free to play way to get Kevlar armor is to complete the storyline in which Barker will give you his Kevlar armor, which has around 60% durability. Fear also added a search party pack to the store. They added a premium plus 10 levels pack for $10. They changed it to where when you use coins to regenerate your energy, it will restore energy above 100. I'm not sure if that change was this update or another one, but it's the first time I noticed it. And then lastly, they made the skin sold at the gas station cheaper, though it is also a lot uglier. So overall, even though the best rewards are reserved for those who pay for them, I would say this update is a really good one. The story is the best story Last Day on Earth has ever come up with, and the rewards for killing the bosses are really good. But more than that, my favorite part of this update was the challenge. I haven't been challenged by Last Day on Earth in a very long time, and instead of just making grindy tasks as per their usual, these locations had both movement and speed-based obstacles in them, which made them a lot of fun. So great job, Kafir. I hope we get to see more updates like this in the future. However, with the introduction of Kevlar armor, I do see a potential problem that I think a lot of players aren't going to be happy about. A full set of Kevlar gives 38 armor, which as I explained in my video about how armor works, reduces damage by 71%. This may not seem like a big deal, but it changes several aspects of the game. Three parasites no longer one-shot you, but more importantly, as we look at multiplayer, 71% damage reduction poses a big problem because in a multiplayer setting, one player could fill their inventory with first aid kits and stall out a fight for minutes at a time. With Kevlar armor and the extra HP you get from skills, the player could even survive two grenade launcher shots at one time. It is for this very reason that every other game that has implemented multiplayer has removed instant dealing. But when they do that, players usually 
the complaint. Last Day on Earth has already changed this in Sector 7 and people have already complained. So I'm curious about your opinion on what the devs should do. Should they reduce the effectiveness of armor so that it no longer makes us invincible? Should they reduce the effectiveness of healing? Should they increase the damage of weapons? Or do you just wish multiplayer would never happen at all? Let me know by voting in this poll. Obviously it doesn't matter a whole lot right now because free to play players can't even get a full durability set of Kevlar and paying players can only get two and a half. But when the devs release the ATV, which they have already finished, then we will be able to farm and craft lots of Kevlar armor so it won't be so rare. Well, that's it guys. Hope that helps. I am not a full-time YouTuber, so when my job gets busy and I'm not able to post for a while, YouTube will stop notifying you of my videos. The only way to protect against this is to both subscribe and hit the bell. Otherwise, maybe we'll see each other again someday, but only if the algorithms line up perfectly. All right, guys, I'll see you next time.